Welcome to part 15. Four. <laughs> Four. No, dummy! 1673! Nice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. They're just. I they're saw just... him go for the. I, go, I saw him go for the blow, and I had to say it. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you did. Because <laughs> it's kind of funny. These security guards are just not securing, and they're not guarding. <laughs> And that's how they can I let Chase McCain we just right disappear. Oh yeah, I also like the kind of like meta-ness of it, of like, you're technically an undercover cop, and the only way to defeat enemies is by putting handcuffs on them, and these guys are technically cops, and they're, they really are the good guys in the context, but you still put handcuffs on them. <laughs> they're beneath him. Yeah. Exactly. You're beneath my nose. In fact, next thing you know, Paul Blart comes out as the boss. In fact, in fact, like the very first time you do that, there's some mook dialogue from the security guards that says, "Like, well, this is messed up." <laughs> <laughs> I'm not into this type of shit. <laughs> oh no, not that's not what I, I meant. Paul Blart to come out as the boss. <laughs> That'd be funny. Uh, mall cop. Oh man, I wish there was a mall level in this game now. Damn. There's not a. Mo How can you have an undercover cop game and not have a mall level? I don't know. We, cause like we ha we're in we're in the museum level right now, and uh, there's there's a bank level. Uh, what else was there? Uh, oh yeah. Level where you're in a skyscraper. That was technically well, like you were running across the rooftops of skyscrapers. Yeah. That was technically the first level. But there's not one where you're actually inside a skyscraper? Um, no. No. Can I ah. Dang it, so no Die Hard references? Damn. No, sorry. I mean, this isn't a Christmas movie, so, um... <laughs> <laughs> you know, technically speaking, Die Hard 2 is also a Christmas movie. Oh, really? Yeah, because at the end of the film, they do say, Merry Christmas, Mother... Fuck yes. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I I haven't seen any Die Hard movies. I know my grandpa sometimes puts it on, but he doesn't know um like orders or stuff because like I, I I don't I don't know what his like movie um critique mentality is. He just puts it on if there are big explosions to go watch. Um, because the one that I'm actually most, like, like yeah, like the one I'm most familiar with of Die Hard because he puts it on on the TV out there is um Die Hard. It's called Die Hard with a Vengeance, which I hear is like yeah. the bad one. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, because I don't really know these movies. <laughs> I've got enough yeah, you're not the type to see it. Uh, you're not, you're not, you don't seem to be the type who watches a lot of action movies. Um, not necessarily, no. I mean, I think by proxy, superhero movies are action movies. By but, proxy, yeah. yes. But yeah, by proxy, that they're just... <laughs> nice! Uh, bash him right into the <laughs> trash can right there. That was awesome. <laughs> um... But yeah, so like, I guess those are the only ones that I've watched in recent memory. Yeah, it's kind of depressing, kind of my, like, my only taste in movies are the ones that are like, I guess, meant for children. <laughs> uh, just the superhero ones. And you, you would get the same thing too, Brian, right? What? Superhero movies, those are like the most liked film genre that you like uh honestly probably yes um it goes back and forth between superhero films and horror films ah i see oh well oh yeah i, I should say I've horror, never watched horror, a lot of horror i like thriller films thriller um could you describe what that is uh, like more suspenseful, um, more like, not necessarily jump scare heavy, but more, uh, like, hanging on the edge of your seat because, like, you're waiting, you're anticipating the next thing. And this is- Just those kinds of films. Is this like a subgenre of horror or something different? It's kind of like a, like a sister genre. A sister genre, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm unfamiliar with like the horror movie culture, so uh, could you culture me up on this thing? <laughs> <laughs> culture me up. We have to culture Ethan on something for once. Exactly. So, uh, I guess the best way I can really uh, do this is by giving an example. So, an example of a horror film would be something like... Chucky? Like Chucky, uh, Aliens, Aliens uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street series, uh, the uh, Friday the 13th series. I was about to say uh, Friday the 13th. Um, it, those are things that I would classify as horror because they, mo they, they rely more on like the blood and gore or the jump scares and things like that. Or classic. Um, Essentially, yeah. Um, and then something that I would consider more of a thriller or like a suspenseful film would be something like Saw, um, I've seen Final Destination. I've seen all of them as well. Uh, things like that. I mean, yes, those movies do re rely on blood and gore just as much as a horror film, but mm -hmm. they don't rely as much on jump scares. Like, I thought, like, you guys are mainly talking about these legacy um, series. I thought these were technically in considered the slasher genre. Not entirely. Yeah. Uh, could you? I mean, you, you, could, you, could, you could look at Jigsaw as maybe, but I wouldn't think Final Destination. Actually, Jigsaw. I mean, the Saw franchise. Created its own subgenre of horror. Hmm. Oh yeah, that that is true. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can't remember the exact name of it. I just know that porn is part of the name. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> what? I think it's essentially called torture porn in a way. Yeah, no, that's what it is. Torture porn. <laughs> in a way. I see. The yeah. Saw franchise created torture yeah, uh, porn. Ethan, you might also have to bleep that as well. <laughs> yeah, you might. <laughs> Uh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no, but uh, fun fact, Final Destination 3 is the reason I'm scared of roller coasters. Really? Uh -huh. Oh man. What yeah. happened in that Final movie? Destination 3 is uh, essentially in the beginning scene, an entire roller coaster falls apart. Really? Yeah, people go flying. People go flying out of the out of the seats. I think one of them even comes off the track. Yep. Just it's like it's, it was that scene in that movie that make the reason I'm scared of roller coasters. I see. No wonder you're like, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to yeah. go. That's the reason I've said no to roller coasters, except for the one time. The two the times. One time at Oak the two Park. times. The two times, like technically. The two times, technically. There's one on the... One was the... Looping, Looping Thunder. Thunder. Yeah. Oh, but, right. Looping Thunder, but that was years ago. That was years ago, and I... That was years, years ago. ago. <laughs> oh, like, I tricked you into saying, come on, I've been on it a thousand times already. I had never been on a roller coaster in my life at that point. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker! Yeah, that's what evil. he did. <laughs> you evil motherfucker! <laughs> Yeah. I mean, Disneyland's the reason why I'm an adrenaline junkie now. Adrenaline junkie? He, yeah. He finds excitement. He, he gets hard when he's on a roller coaster. Did you say high or hard? Both. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he could get both. But I you, really you want to go to uh, Universal Orlando because I really want to go on the Velocicoaster. Velocicoaster. Yeah. It's uh, it's a new Jurassic World themed roller coaster. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. Speaking of a uh, Jurassic, um, <laughs> it's coming up right Museum. here. Museum. <laughs> well, like we have to actually build the T Rex um skeleton uh -oh. that we steal. <laughs> yeah, we had to collect super bricks around in this little area so we can do that. Okay, so we were mentioning movies. I caught in a little bit. Uh -huh. Were we talking about like what genre was our favorite? Was that what we were talking about? Because I kind of peeked in at like the last second. I'm. I kind of forgot how we got into this tangent. <laughs> uh, you I just mentioned. Me. I just mentioned someone saying they like thrillers, and I believe that was Brian. 
and I, I think I remember I talked about action movies, like oh, I had those yeah. kind of kids yeah. where like. No, I like I like action movies. I like action movies a lot. I probably too too many to count actually. Oh, like like which type of action movies? I guess it doesn't Big really boobs. matter with me. Big boobs. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess it for me it's more of like a. More like the cop action movies, those are always, mm. always fun. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Like, and um, what about, say, superhero ones too? I'm not a, I'm not a big superhero one, personally, but... You've seen a couple though, right? I've seen a couple. Uh, they haven't been very good, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh... <laughs> Green Lantern. Oh, no. <laughs> um, what about the, uh, the Dark Knight trilogy? Oh, I've seen those, yeah. Yeah, because oh, I, yeah. I... I feel like, like, you guys might agree with this. I feel like everyone of, like, all audiences and niches has some form of enjoyment from the Dark Knight trilogy. I remember for the last, like, three years, Ethan, I think me and you debated over who was the best Batman. Oh yeah, I like can't three, <laughs> slightly like remember three that. years, we debated on that. Well, like, it, it, it was, uh, who was the better Batman? This was coming off of the high, because, like, I was, I actually was a little bit impressed with the, um, the Ben Affleck Batman from Batman v yeah. Superman. It's like, I, I feel like he, that's, like, one of them, I don't want to say redeeming <laughs> factors of that movie. It's not a good movie, for the record. Nah, it's not a good movie. No, but it, it I think that, like, Batman was entertaining. <laughs> More so! You know, uh, are, you, are you guys asking like wh who was like, the bad man? So what is Rex's connection to my dad? Uh, no, I believe no Ethan I was saying Ben Affleck. I was saying Christian Bale. Yeah. Is, is Christian Bale like Dark Knight Returns? Yeah. Oh, Christian Bale yeah. the Dark, Dark Knight the trilogy. The Dark Knight trilogy Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, I, if I think compare it to, you, I would say Dark Knight Returns. The T Rex is a drop off. There is no return. That's, That's the animated one. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Oh yeah. Also right here. The, uh, it's technically Dark facility. Knight Rises. Dark Knight Rises. Fuck me. me. Whatever. I, you guys know I don't fucking watch movies too much. I like how the warehouse that I just put the T-Rex in is now suddenly empty. Dude, you don't know. Alien, you fucking teleported. You were like ima alien magic. <laughs> you just phased through the wall. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's not supposed to happen. Also, this police car glitched out. <laughs> it's just Looks there. Like it. <laughs> yep. That doesn't look like a standard issue police car. It doesn't have a roof. I broke it Dude, with the T Rex like foot. Fucking, like, have the, has uh, this police force not learned from what happened to JFK? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> it's it's not an assassination. It's a surprise impeachment. But, uh... Surprise <laughs> impeachment? No, no, no! Impeachment is just vote to kick. <laughs> vote to kick. <laughs> <laughs> just vote to kick. That's every game of Rainbow Six ranked I've ever played. Yeah, essentially. But uh, yeah, what were you gonna say, Cam? Oh, hey there, Frank. I was going to say, I've seen some of the uh, other action, like I think we talked about this a little bit ago, like I think of different episodes of this was um, like spy movies, I believe. Oh yeah, we talked, we, talked, we talked briefly about that during Uncharted actually. I believe, I believe we talked about 007 and Mission Impossible. Yeah, because I remember I had asked you like... Because I had just seen the trailer for No Time to Die recently, and I was like, yeah. I don't know if people are still interested in this because I don't know if like the um, the style of um, secret agents was kind of dying off or not. Well, I had saw a movie recently, I think like a, maybe a month or two ago, that was kind of like it, but it was actually very good, surprisingly. What was it called? Uh, I believe I mentioned this before. I believe it was called Nobody. Nobody? Nobody. Yeah, you have mentioned this. Yeah, I have. I think I've mentioned nobody before. Never heard of it. Uh, it's kind of like uh, it, I I don't want to spoil it for those who have not seen it. Okay. Uh, it's essentially about this guy who essentially he seems like like a normal civilian. 
but he kind of takes justice into his own hands after his uh, family gets burglarized in the middle of the night. And oh. then as the movie goes on, you kind of learn a lot more about his character. I see. I see. Uh, one of the best scenes, though, is he essentially kicks the shit out of, like, like five people on a bus. Damn. <laughs> But it's not like it's not like one of those scenes where he doesn't get touched. He actually gets the shit kicked out of himself as well. Uh, so it's not like where he's um untouchable. Right? He's not he's untouchable. Not no, he gets, he gets he get this man gets like kicked in the chest. He gets thrown out of a bus window. He gets stabbed in the side. Like Damn. he he gets he gets damaged as well. But what he does to the other guys is just I recommend looking up the scene on YouTube. It's. <laughs> It's a goddamn impressive scene, I'll tell you that much. All right. Apparently, from what I heard, that was all the scenes that he did were all done by himself. Like there was no stunt yeah. actor. Really? Wow. Yeah. That's very impressive, yeah. actually. <laughs> and the guy looks like he's like fifty. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, since Brian is here, I actually would like to get his um, input. I was like, do you think like the whole secret agent genre of action movie is kind of losing its glory it's kind of played out i think so okay at least when it comes to the style of like 007 because some some like spy movies or like secret agent movies have been able to like change up the the style like john wick for example yeah like john wick was really able to stand out but movies like 007 and Mission Impossible and stuff, I think those t that type of style of like secret agent films, I think those are the ones that are really dying out. Yeah. And it's just it's just because at this point it's just routine. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's the same reason Agent Forty Seven failed as bad as it did. It was yeah. just the routine spy movie, despite forty, despite the Hitman games always being not routine. Hmm. It doing its own thing in a way. If you've ever played any of the games, uh, is is Agent Forty Seven the movie um, game? Yeah, a movie about the game. Okay, I actually have seen that. I actually have seen yeah. that. Yeah, and it did. It was not very impressive at all. I no. say I like it over the other uh, Hitman movie. That there they was did in another. There was one they did in like two thousand seven, I think. Uh, oh, that. I don't know which one I watch now. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh, what was the one you watched about? Um, if you can remember. I don't remember what it was about. I just remembered the bald dude and the barcode on the back of his neck. Well, that's almost every single hitman. I know. <laughs> Do you remember the name of the film? Yeah. Did it have a scene where he, this guy, chronic like the bald guy, created a smoke screen with his car? Um. Don't. And then he stepped out of the car and started shooting everyone? Well, I do remember a scene where Agent 47 crashed into some dude's apartment and the kids just happened to be playing a Hitman game. That must have been 2007 then, probably. Yeah, I watched that one. <laughs> they just happened to be playing the game. That, yeah. All right, yeah. It was hilarious. Yeah. That Brian. is funny yet stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it Whatever. You, Brian, you mentioned um, uh, John Wick. Yeah. Uh, well, nobody was created by the same guys who made John Wick as well. That makes sense. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Probably why the movie was made so, what was perceived so well. Yeah, could you guys describe to me just briefly about, like, how John Wick differentiates itself from, say, 007 and Mission Impossible? Action. <laughs> yes. That, that, that is how it differentiates. <laughs> it doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> so John Wick, John Wick, the plot of John Wick is this. Man gets revenge on, uh, on giant mob family because they killed his dog. And that's essentially nobody as well, but just switch mm -hmm. dog with robbed family. Yeah. That is the entire plot of John Wick. However, the reason the reason why it's so entertaining is because John Wick is not some normal guy. Uh, there's actually a uh, there's actually a video essay that I watched explaining this of how to make a terrifying protagonist. Um, and the reason why John Wick is so terrifying as a protagonist is because uh, 
after uh, one after the son of the mob boss kills John Wick's dog, uh, his father basically like gives him a giant lecture about why what he did was the worst idea he's ever had. Uh, and that's because John Wick is not some normal guy. They literally, they literally reference John. Uh, they they call John Wick Baba Yaga, which is the Russian goddess of death. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, but how it differentiates it, how it uh, separates itself from other action and uh, like spy films is just because of its action. Um, because its action is very much like that in like the Kingsman movies. Yeah. Hmm. Um, like very fast pace, uh, very, uh, very slick. Uh, but it's it, just like a nobody. John Wick is also not untouchable. Yeah. Um, while John Wick is very, uh, like thoughtful of what he's going to do and, and like his plan of attack. Um, he does, he does make mistakes and he does get hurt. <laughs> so he's yeah. human. Same, same thing with nobody. But yeah, no, the short answer is just action <laughs> just just action and do you, like maybe a little bit of premise because I, again i feel like double and seven mission impossible are because of their their routine premises is just kind yeah. of losing its fame. Of like big evil villain 007 gets captured villain makes villain speech 007 somehow escapes and then kills final boss yeah yeah there, I just summed up pretty much every 007 film for Pretty it. much. Oh, yeah. Also, the girl dies at the end of every film. Yeah, except, essentially. Except for and Spectre. A car, and a car is destroyed. And a car is destroyed, yeah. Except for Spectre, which kept the girl alive for some reason. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and he always gets some form of new gadget. Uh, yeah. Right, yeah. So it is pretty routine. Sometimes it's pretty good or, like, entertaining. Because, like, I know people really hate Quantum of Souls, but really love Squ- Skyfall. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. Honestly, my favorite 007 movie is The Man with the Golden Gun. <laughs> oh, one of yeah. the old ones, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I love the old 007 films. Sean Connery. Yeah, that's when it was, like, in its golden age of things. And then it just kind of got old i suppose well the creator of 007 literally said that the character of 007 is based off of sean connery as a person yeah i I still don't know what that means (laughs) so sean connery the person the actor yes Uh uh-huh he's the inspiration for 007 yeah and ergo they casted him to play himself yes essentially yeah that's very stupid <laughs> all right he's not supposed to be like a role for sean Con- like he wasn't a role created for sean connery he was literally it is sean connery. connery yeah it is sean connery 